well aware that we have several young people here. And um, I just want you to know that if they get a little rambunctious, it's not going to phase me. It might phase somebody else, but it's not going to phase me. So don't feel like you have to take them out. Um, just understand they can always crank the sound up for me. Okay? And uh, if one of those young people happens to be Lincoln, cut this is fine. This is, he has no idea really what's going on, so just cut him some slack. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. The person who believes in me, though they may die, yet shall live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And that's hard to understand. Because the person that you've loved and respected and cared for for so many years isn't here taking breath with us. But she's here, and she's here, and always will be. <clears throat> well, we have gathered together tonight to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Kayla Nicole Cusack. Kayla was born August the 15th, 1984 in Peoria to Terry and Jackie Brown Cusack. Surviving are her parents, a daughter Layla, two sons Cole and Lincoln. Kayla leaves to greet her death, three sisters, Megan, Deidre, Jacqueline, okay, two brothers, Tyler and Logan. Also surviving are her maternal grandparents, Richard and Leah Brown, and paternal grandparents, Ray and Sherry Cusack. Kayla is also survived by several aunts, nephews, nieces, nephews, cousins, a very good childhood friend, Tyler, uh, preceded him death and preceded her in death but look at the number of family and friends that are here to remember her. You look, look around because here's the family. They will need you in the next few weeks, months, and years. But we come together tonight in grief to acknowledge our human loss. We pray that God would grant us grace that in this pain, we may find comfort in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Let's pray together. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. We especially praise you for Kayla, who you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these, grant your peace. Let your light shine upon them and help us so to believe where we have not seen, that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home, a home not made with hands, but a home that is eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. <coughs> a couple portions of scriptures to share with you. The first one was requested, and it is the 23rd Psalm. As I said to the family the other day, there's a, a phrase in there that um, to me is really important, and there's another phrase in there that needs a little bit of explanation. So I'll go with the explanation first, and then I'll, I'll talk about that one more. In the phrase it says, in the, old, in the old King James, it says, Thou anointest my head with oil. And to me that always seems strange. But the more I've learned about it is that it's not, it's not all that strange. Remember that the shepherd who wrote this, or the person who wrote this, was a shepherd. And sheep has a tendency to get their heads stuck in the briars. And when, there's, when the head's stuck in there, all the insects and parasites and everything can get into their nose and their eyes and their ears and everything and almost literally drive them crazy. But the oil keeps those insects and parasites away. So the, it's really an indication of God's protection. The other phrase I want to share with you is, even though I walk through the darkest valley, and for me the most important word there is through. 
because it tells us that we don't have to stay in that dark valley, but we walk through it. Now, we may walk through it three or four times or more, but we walk through it. There's a, a way out. So I'm going to share this with you right now. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they protect me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup is <coughs> unfolds. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And then from the Gospel of John, Jesus was trying to prepare his followers for the fact that he was really going to die and they didn't understand it. So he has a lengthy conversation with them. With them. And uh, let's face it, you know, if he was talking to us, we wouldn't have understood it either. So I always try to cut them some slack. But um, he tries to explain this and um, I, I want you to listen to it as if he was talking to you. Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. There's more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I'm going. No, we don't know, Lord. Thomas, the one that we call the doubter, said, we don't know, Lord. So we have no idea where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus told him, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one could come to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would know my Father. You would know who my Father is. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. And Jesus replied, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father, so why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father, who lives in me, does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. And as you let that soak in, let's listen to one of the songs.
Bethany Frankel, an American television personality, entrepreneur, author, said this, quote, you cannot show people only the petals and not the thorns. It's not fair to them, end quote. Too often, we pastors and parents tend to paint life as all roses. And we do those to whom we are speaking a disservice. Life is tough. Fortunately, Pastor Max Lucado is honest with people who take the time to read his book, You'll Get Through This. In that book, Lucado says this, quote, you'll get through this. It won't be painless. It won't be quick. But God will use this mess for good. In the meantime, don't be foolish or naive. But don't despair either. With God's help, you will get through this. In the quote. And to the Cusack family, I affirm that, that quote. With God's help, you will get through this. It's going to be tough, but you will get through it. <coughs> Life for Kayla was a challenge. She loved hard. That was a phrase that was used. She loved hard. And she was a people pleaser. And often that is to the person's detriment. When you're a people pleaser, you're always trying to please others, and you forget about yourself. Her family said Kayla brought home people like she brought home stray animals. <laughs> <laughs> she even gave Layla, her daughter, gave her the, her best friend, which was a cat named Ella. Kayla loved animals and would nurse a wounded animal back to health. She was known to put on a hoodie backwards <laughs> and put a kitten in the hood and just cuddle with that little, cook, with that little uh, kitten. And her love of animals was perhaps a gift that she shared with her sister, I think it was Deidre. <laughs> Deidre loves animals too. That love included her collection of bullfrogs, <laughs> which she was keeping in the cooler. And let's Can just say it frogs? this way, mother was not amused. <laughs> Kayla loved her kids very much. I was told she gave the best hugs, and although she, she gave the best hugs, although she found it hard, to receive hugs. Cole said his mom was the, quote, the most awesomeness mother ever. <laughs> and then he said, I don't know if that's a word or not. I said, today it's a word. <laughs> Layla mentioned that she and her mom are often at odds. Well, most mothers and daughters are often at odds with each other, but Layla and Kayla knew love was their common bond. Someone has said, by the, thing, by the time you realize your mother was right. Now, ladies, listen. By the time you realize your mother was right, you ha have a daughter who thinks you're wrong. Jackie, you probably, probably could concur with that comment. And you've got daughters. I'm fairly certain Kayla would agree with that as well. So just be aware of that, ladies. We are here tonight to celebrate, celebrate Kayla's life, but we do ourselves a dis, a dis we do ourselves a disservice if we don't admit why we are here. Kayla had issues that she had been dealing with for years, and I. Said to the family the other day, I appreciate the honesty 
that they used in the obituary. For many years, drug addictions and mental health issues have been swept under the carpet. And I think that's wrong. I believe it is when we begin to talk openly about those struggles that we begin to move toward healing and wholeness. <laughs> Kayla fought the demon of drug abuse and she made decisions, but she made decisions to go to rehab. That was an important decision. But let's be clear. Kayla was in rehab and she died. I won't go into those details. It's not my story to tell. But let's be honest. She was making a step in the right direction. Now she may have made those made that step several times. But that's okay. I want to share with you this. That while we are struggling trying to understand everything that Kayla went through, Jesus wants to offer to us abundant life. Jesus wants to give us peace. And I know you're thinking, yeah, you're the pastor. You're supposed to be saying stuff like that. But I just want you to know that Jesus understands those struggles. And if you're struggling with any addiction or mental illness, Jesus wants to help you with those issues. Jesus will put those people that need to be there in your path but too often we see them and we push them away i want to i want you to understand you will struggle but you won't struggle alone i want to share a story with you a story from the bible it's about a guy by the name of joseph and it's not joseph the mother of uh, the father of jesus it's about a joseph in the old testament bright young man his father, Jacob, was so impressed with Joseph that he, his favoritism for Joseph was not hidden. And the other brothers, and there are like 11 other brothers, they knew Joseph was the favored son. And of course, it didn't help that Joseph angered his brothers when he eventually said to them that they were going to honor him by bowing down before him. Now let's face it. We wouldn't like to hear that either, would we? So what did the dear brothers do? They tied him up and tossed him in a cistern, just left him there to die until they discovered they could make some money by selling him to, to some of the um, people who were on the, the, the nomads that were headed down to Egypt. So they sold, sold him and made some money. And eventually, Joseph found himself in servitude to one of the highest officials in Egypt. Remember, I said that Joseph was a bright boy, or a bright young man. He was not only bright, he was handsome. Now, don't tell me the Bible was boring. I don't believe it. So here's this bright, handsome young man in service to one of the highest officials in Egypt. And this young man is propositioned by the wife of a high official. It's in there. Trust me, it's in there. So here he is. He's been accused of inappropriate behavior. And for that, he gets tossed into prison. Now he could have complained and said, wait a minute, I didn't do this. No, 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 he could have done that. But while he was in prison, he found himself encouraging some of the other prisoners. And eventually because of his intelligence and his integrity, he was given an opportunity to impress the king of Egypt. And because of his ability to impress the king, he was placed second in command of the country. He's in charge of the country. Today we would say he was the secretary of agriculture. 
because that's what he was doing. He was dealing out or um, sharing the, the grain with, with other people that needed it. And his brothers, remember his brothers were angry that they that he said that he would that they would bow down to him? Well they came begging for food. And the brothers bowed down and honored him, just as Joseph said they would. And finally, Joseph said to them, I'm your brother Joseph. And they were afraid. And he said, come closer. I'm the one you sold to Egypt. But don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves that you sold me here. Actually, God sent you or God sent me before you to save lives. We've already had two years of famine in the land and there's five more years to come. God sent me before you to make sure you'd survive and to rescue your lives in this amazing way. You didn't send me here. It was God. Now, if you happen to read that book, You'll Get Through This by Max Lucado, you'll hear that story. Because it was based on that that Lucado wrote the book. You'll get through this. I can, I can hear... God saying to Joseph, you'll get through this. Hang in there. You'll get through this. It won't be painless. It won't be quick. But God will use this mess for good. In the meantime, don't be foolish or naive and don't despair. With God's help, you will get through this. I want to tell you again, you will get through this. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be quick. It's not going to be painless, but you'll get through this. And what I want to tell you is that as you're going through all of this, there's somebody that you can lean on. You lean on God. You might not have trusted God ever before. You might even think some of what I'm saying tonight is foolishness. But when you're going through it, I want you to remember these words also from the Bible. First Peter. And he wrote this. Cast all your cares on God. For God cares for you. As surely as I stand here tonight, I believe that you'll get through this. You'll get through this probably by being angry with God at times. And you know what? It's okay to be angry with God. God has large, strong shoulders, and God can handle your anger. God can, hang your, uh, God can handle your frustration. In fact, if you don't believe me, read through some of the Psalms. Throughout the Psalms, there's, there are phrases such as, How long, O oh God? How long? And you can hear that frustration of the writer. How long am I going to have to go through this? How long are you going to hide your face from me? How long? Well, God is there. God is hearing you. And I encourage you to lean on God. You are or have been or will be shedding tears. Because you miss this young lady. Now, to the daughters, or to the daughter and the sons, I know you think young, but she's a young lady. She was a young lady. So what I want you to do is just imagine that when you're shedding those tears, that God is shedding tears right along with you. And as you hold hands with each other, as I've seen many of you do tonight, picture in your mind God holding your hand. Because God is with you. God is going through this with you. And God will help you through this. I want you to know 
that drug addictions and mental health does not define Kayla. It's what she struggled with. But she always sought help. And there's nothing wrong with asking for help. So if any of you are going through struggles right now with drug or alcohol, abuse, addictions, mental illnesses, don't be afraid to talk to somebody. Don't be afraid to talk to a professional. I mean, be careful who you talk to, because if you talk to another drug addict, they're gonna have something for you. So if you're going through drug abuse, talk to somebody, professional, who can help you through this. Because God wants for you an abundant life, an exciting life, a life filled with joy and peace. And it's up to you as to whether or not you will accept that love from Jesus Christ. Let's pray together and then uh, Megan and Logan want to share some memories. God of us all, your love never end, ends. When all, when all else fails, you are still God. <clears throat> We pray to you for one another in our need and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To the, those who doubt, give us your light. <clears throat> to those who are weak, we need your strength. To all who have sinned, and that is all of us, show us mercy. And to all who sorrow, surround us with your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. In all our ways, we trust you. To you with your church on earth and in heaven, we offer honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Megan or Logan, who wants to go first? No, they're going to go first. You don't to go start by thanking each and every one of you for taking the time to be here today and for showing the love and support for our family this past week. Kayla would have been so happy to know how much love our parents and her kiddos are getting right now. For those of you who may not know, I'm Kayla's big sister Megan. Megs, as Kayla would call me. I've been struggling all week trying to find the right words to put together for my little sis, because she deserves only the best today. After much thought, I decided to not share specific stories like people sometimes do. Because those are precious to me. And selfishly, I want to keep them. Instead, I'm going to try my best to let you see my beautiful, funny, and caring sister through my eyes and my baby's eyes for the next few minutes. If you are sitting in this room right now, then that means you have the honor, the honor of knowing my sister and the honor of feeling her love. <laughs> Kayla loved big and she loved with her whole heart. She loved her kiddos and her family with every inch of her heart. From as early as I can remember, she was always trying to make others smile. She was pretty great at it most of the time. Waving at complete strangers in the grocery store, literally making friends everywhere she went. Sometimes in inappropriate situations. She had the most beautiful smile. Her laugh was lovely and super contagious. She was so funny and had an extreme talent for lightening the mood in any situation. 
most of the time with an appropriate, inappropriate comment or something so random that we would forget why we were upset to begin with. She really had a great sense of humor. From an early age, Kayla's never afraid to be herself. She wore crazy clothes, always had bright colors, crazy glasses, and was just a little extra. Growing up, she was happy, carefree, and loud. She would talk so fast. She talked loud, she walked loud, she sang loud, most of the time out of tune, and she loved loud as well. She would talk so fast that sometimes we'd have to remind her to take a breath and slow down. Kayla would do anything for anyone no matter what, even when she probably shouldn't have in some cases. I knew that if I ever needed someone to talk to, she was there for me and our whole family. She was brave and she was so strong and I didn't realize just how strong until these last few months. We are all aware that Kayla didn't always make things easy for herself. She liked to push the limits and live a little on the wild side a tad bit more than the rest of us did. She had many struggles in her life, some of which she had no control over, and some that she did. I don't want to stand up here and sugarcoat her life or make it sound like she was nothing. None of us are. She was an addict, and she did suffer from mental health problems, but it did not define who she was to us. To me, she was my little sister, one of my best friends, someone I could always rely on for a good laugh, someone to share secrets with, and she would always give an honest opinion. She was never afraid to tell you what she was thinking, even if she knew you wouldn't like it. She loved to have the last word in any conversation, and I usually let her because it was an easy battle otherwise. But I want you to know that when she was trying, she was trying to make things better for herself and for Layla and Cole and Lincoln. She was fighting harder than she had ever probably fought, more than anyone should ever have to fight in their lifetime. She was doing the right thing, getting the help that she needed in a place where she and the rest of us thought she was safe. That was not the case. Our system failed, and I'm so incredibly sad that she was taken from us and that this is the world that we live in right now. I want to end by asking each and every one of you to remember Kayla for the huge heart that she had and the non judgmental way that she lived her life. The next time you see someone struggling, whether it be with depression, anxiety, substance abuse of any kind, or if they're just having a bad day in general, be more like Kayla and open your heart to them. Sometimes all we need to do is actually feel a little more love in order to make a change. Don't be afraid of bringing home a straight and pull every now and then. <laughs> I'm sure that would make Kayla very happy. Be a little extra in your life. Be a little more brave. And most of all, just be kind. Please remember my sister for how we saw her. Kayla, I love you most forever and ever. And I promise to always keep your memory alive and loud. I promise to surround your babies with so much love and to protect them no matter what. I love you so much, Kayla Coley. I'm going to ask that lady and Cole to come up. And I'm going to have you guys stay. <coughs> I'm Logan. I'm the younger brother, and I'm adopted, so I, I was told that when I was first brought to the family, when I was brought to the family, Kayla was the first one. It's hard. To lose your sister. <clears throat> when I was brought to the family, Kayla was the first one to oh, accept me with open arms, and she would just, like Megan has said, she's stubborn and a handful, and that was our sister. 
I remember, um, I don't remember, but I was told that when I was younger, and when I was still a baby, Kayla brought me to uh, Joel's grandpa, grandpa uh, uh, dad, I think, and Kayla dropped me in the car seat, and I fell over. <laughs> and uh, I think from that day on, I've had it, I had it out for Kayla. <laughs> I don't remember it, but I, I can kind of sense that. <laughs> Me and Kayla had a love-hate relationship. Our love language was F you or all of that. We'd fight constantly and out of anybody, we both had, we both would never let have any of us have the last word. It was always we had that both of us had to have the last word. Kayla was stubborn and whenever we got done fighting, Kayla was always the first one to apologize and give me the biggest hug and say she was sorry. Well I, well, I was too stubborn to accept the apology, which I deeply regret. Not a day goes by that I don't miss my sister, Kayla. I miss her with every second hour, month, and or day. I will always miss her. I will always love her. And I'll never forget the time when she brought those damn cats to the house and came. They were strays <laughs> weren't she got them <laughs> i was so pissed <laughs> i would think kayla would take me and Layla and cole to the theaters and about oh, here peeking and there there was a there's a casey's and she'd teach us to sneak snacks because they were just the god-awful prices of theater snacks uh, I remember Kayla taught me that 12 a.m. before the day before your birthday, 12 a.m. was the next day. And on my seventh birthday, Kayla told me to stay up at 12 and she had a surprise for me. And I stayed up until 12 and she told me it was my birthday. And I'll never forget how excited I was that I jumped on the table and started dancing. She asked me what I wanted for breakfast the next day, and I said, pancakes. So the next day I woke up, she brought out this huge stack of pancakes with a candle on top. Like me and Kayla, me and my uncle are all at odds. And we always fight like siblings. I love them deeply. And I'm so sorry you guys lost your mom at a young age. Kayla was the first, I'd say the first sibling that truly made me feel at home with the family, that they were my family. Uh, what else is there? I, I, I'm gonna have Layla say something, because she really wants to. I, Kayla brought home dogs and whatnot, and we recently had a dog, Poppy, pass away, and I just really hope that Kayla's with her taking care of me. Here you go, Layla. My mom, how do I afford this? She was so pretty. She had the best smile. If I could do anything in the world to give her one last hug, I would. But uh, she was saying that she did bring me home a best friend. Her name's Ella. She's turning three here soon. And she did, she had a really, really relationship with cats and dogs and other animals. <laughs> there is one thing that me and her would fight about all the time is that she she thought we would always fight if I, if I kept stealing her socks. <laughs> and then she would always steal my shirts and stuff, so I'd always fight with her about that. <laughs> But everyone has been telling me the last couple of days how much I looked like her when she was young, and I'm just now realizing how much I look like her. Because <laughs> I always thought I looked like my dad, but apparently I look like my mom too. <laughs> so. Me and my mom, one night, she was, we were sitting outside. It, we had a cat named Elsa and Anna. Elsa, she passed away now. But she, we were sitting outside because we couldn't find the cats, but she did her little thing, like, here, kitty, kitty, kitty. 
<laughs> and the cat would come running to her. She did it all the time. Tyler was saying how annoying it would get when he kept doing it over and over. She loved wearing Cole's hoodies. She always steals them. But she was just, she was just loved by so many people. And everyone else. I all yeah. Really, um, what's your name? My name's Cole. I'm sure you guys know that. 